Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about how artists develop their own unique sounds, how consistent you should be as an artist within your own sound, and kind of just what the pros and cons are of having a wider net of different genres and styles that you cover as a musician. I know for myself, I kind of diverge between two different paths. Both are electronic music, but one is a little bit more singer focused, a little bit more pop, a little bit more simple, I would say. And then the other one is a little bit more EDM, dance, kind of more complex, more creative. I get a little bit more different. And usually I still have singers in this style, but I do kind of go these two different paths. But the thing is, over the last few years, I have kind of developed a sound and it's all unintentional. It's not something that I've been trying to do. I've not been trying to like combine certain artists or go in a certain direction. It just kind of has happened naturally. And now it's almost a problem to where if I want to do create something different, it's kind of like I have to try to break out of the mold. So there are both pros and cons to having kind of a more developed, unique sound. And in today's video, I want to talk about what we should do as artists to develop our sound and to diverge from that sound. I think I found my new favorite spot here. It's only like seven minutes from my house and there's practically no one here at the beach. So yeah, every sunny summer day, I'm definitely gonna be down here listening to the birds, getting some swimming in, taking a break from music. So in order to answer this question, I think we need to draw some lines, make some distinctions. There's actually two things that determine your sound as an artist. There's obviously both genre, kind of the big picture category of what genre you make music as. You can make music as a house producer, as a pop producer, as more of a rock alternative producer. All of these are obviously under the genre category. And then there's the sonic quality, arrangement quality type of thing. And there is a lot of overlap between these two, but someone could actually produce any genre of music, but kind of have it sound like themselves because they have a sonic quality about them that spreads across all of the genres. It's really what makes music great because yes, certain genres do embody certain sonic qualities, but there's so much depth to each of these sonic qualities. For example, like a really mechanical trap hat that's kind of popular today, or at least maybe it's dying out a little bit now, but that could be altered in so many different ways based on how you bring your own sonic qualities to that sound. And so then alongside these two different categories of sound, there's also two different types of fans that kind of line up with these two things. There's one type of fan that's hardcore into one specific genre. They dive deep into that genre and they only really like music that's similar to that genre. Um, so if you as an artist start to differ from that genre, they might get mad at you and might stop listening to you. Then there's a completely different type of fan and this is kind of where I fall. I just fall in love with an artist and the sonic qualities and the emotions and the arrangements that they bring to music. And it doesn't matter which genres they're in, I love the variety as long as there's something that I can kind of grasp onto that is unique about how they make music. So what is the answer to this question? Should you make a big variety of music or should you be more precise with the different styles of music that you make? The answer that I'm gonna provide might be a little unsatisfactory, but I think it's really true and it's true across many different aspects of music and life and that's moderation. I think you should have some discipline, but you should also have some experimentation in your routine. A little bit more specific to this is you should try to aim for one of those fan groups as your target audience and create music that they will like. So if you really enjoy just making house music, then just dive deep into making house music and appease that one type of fan group. If you can't really make up your mind about what specific genre that you wanna make and you feel like you're always changing genres, then try to hone in on some similar sonic qualities and arrangements between all your songs. But at the same time, you can experiment a little bit and maybe narrow yourself down to just two or three genres, possibly. I mean, this is all up to you, of course. But that's kind of what I've done. And yeah, you'll just start to have more fun with it if you don't lock yourself in too much. 
there's a whole other section of this park that I just discovered, but we'll save that for the next video, or maybe two videos from now when I come back and actually get into the water and go for a swim. So I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of having a more spread out, diverse group of styles of music that you're working on and making. And the first thing is you're not going to pigeonhole yourself into one specific style of music. And if you start this early in your career, then people won't associate you with just that one type of music. You can be more flexible, have more freedom, and people won't look negatively upon you for doing that. Another pro is that anything that you experiment with outside of your main genre, you can bring back. And if you do have a home genre, you can incorporate all of those skills and abilities into that home genre and make your sound that much more unique in that genre and that much better. Now for the downsides, this path is a little bit riskier. You know, it might be harder to market yourself. You might develop slower in the first couple years. So you just kind of have to weigh these. You may have a better long-term reward if you do have a little bit of breadth in the sound that you decide to go with. So then the question is, how do you develop and hone in on your genre, your sonic qualities to begin with? And if you're more intermediate or advanced, this question might just be trivial to you, might be obvious, but to someone who's a little bit earlier, this is actually really vital, something that I think a lot of new artists struggle with. And the thing is, don't worry about it too much. It'll just happen naturally. It's a combination of the tools that you start to use, whether that's synthesizers or plugins that you really hone in on, or certain techniques within the tools that you really start to appreciate and start to use more and more. It's about the process of how you arrange a track and kind of the different strategies and steps you go through. If you do these over and over again with each song, then each song, no matter what, will have a confined box that it'll be within, and that'll be your sonic quality. The other aspect is the people that you draw inspiration from, what types of music you're listening to, how you're internalizing that, whether you're actively or passively listening to these different types of music. All of this plays a huge role. But in general, don't worry about it too much. Practice the tools that you have, practice your techniques, practice your instruments, and then just listen to a lot of different music and start to figure out which types of music are the most unique and compelling to you as an artist. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and the more kind of casual, laid back approach to it. I've got another video kind of similar along these lines coming up in the next few days. But for now, I'm gonna go maybe jump in the lake even though it's overcast and only 65 degrees. Water is probably like 10 degrees. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.